I'm LP Master 6 and welcome to what is hopefully the final sitting of Game & Watch Gallery. It's a fun game, but my god, is it stressful to record an entire Let's Play for? Last time we got 75%. Not really, because we're not doing 100% because I had to give up. Which is a huge bummer, a huge shame. But we have one game left out of the four. Before that, I want to mention a weird tidbit I've noticed. Whenever you start the game up, it starts you on Manhole, you know, the top game. That makes sense. But the game always remembers the last mode that you played of each game. So it has it selected on Hard, if you last did Hard or Easy, if you last did it on Easy, in all of them. Forever. Until the save batteries die. So I, I just thought that was weird and worth mentioning, I guess. It isn't, but we're going to get into this game, which seems like a good final boss, right? Because it's got the Bowser when he's still scary, but he's modern enough to be acceptable by 1997 game standards. A beautiful blend of Game & Watch times and modern times. Speaking of modern and classic times, look at the difference. In classic, the buttons and the control pad do the same thing. But in modern, we can spin. So let's talk more about that. First, the plot. Bowser is dripping very slowly oil into the roof of a castle uh, that looks to be on fire at the bottom. I'm not sure exactly. But instead of going to defeat Bowser like he always does, Mario jumps in with two very small pitchers, buckets, whatever, to hold three drops of oil each at a time, while Yoshi helps him by walking around aimlessly on the balcony below to eat the oil and breathe fire to get rid of it so it doesn't burn the castle down, I guess? Uh, this is the least efficient, least ergonomic situation I've ever seen. Because Mario could just kick Bowser's ass and make him leave. And also, this looks more like one of Bowser's structures than it does, you know, one of the Mushroom Kingdoms, so I don't know what's going on. And Luigi's just asleep down there, and Donkey Kong Jr. is down there too, and I don't know why or what he's doing. But I executed the spin move there, in case you didn't notice, which is in fact quite sick. All right, we gotta go up. Ooh, that's close. But this is by far the easiest game of the three for one reason only. So if you let the oil hit the floor, then that's a fire miss. That's a miss on the top screen because this was originally released on the Game & Watch in 81, 82, something like that. And it had two screens, like a DS. Uh, Donkey Kong for the Game & Watch was the first game to look like a DS. Uh, might have been the first game ever to have two screens, but I'm not sure about that. It was the first game to ever have a D-pad. So thanks Gunpei Yokoi for that. But this is another one of those type games. Sorry, I had to focus for a second, even though this game is insanely easy. Uh, sorry, I really can't get good commentary out today. I got all the way to 300 points, and I had to start over because the video was just even more boring than you'd expect an oil panic video to be. More on that later. But, um... <laughs> <clears throat> Where was I? Oh my god. Oh, I remember now, after a good minute of thinking, I was talking about how there are two screens. So, uh, letting the oil hit the floor uh, gives you a fire logo under the misses. But... If you pour the oil out onto wherever Yoshi isn't, like if I poured it out to the left right now instead of where Yoshi is, which is on the right, then it would hit Donkey Kong Jr. or Luigi and cover them in oil. Obviously, they should either move or like give us a hand, but they aren't. So that's not really our fault. Again, like this is the least efficient way that Mario and Yoshi could have handled this Bowser situation. All they have to do is wake up Luigi but I guess I'm not going to question this adaptation of oil panic. Oh god. Oh. 
Come on, come on. Come on, come on, let's do the Donkey Kong. Do the Donkey Kong. No, get back to it. Uh, what I was, shit, shit. <laughs> I miss at 100. But if you pour it on Donkey Kong Jr. or Luigi, that counts as an entirely separate miss. So there are two different miss counters, meaning you can make four mistakes and the game still goes. It takes five mistakes maximum to end the game, which, you know, four mistakes allowed is double the two mistakes allowed of almost any other Game & Watch game, at least anyone that we've come across this far, thus far, sorry. All right, come on. I gotta go, gotta go, thank you. The game controls like faster than you expect it to, so I have to keep that in mind. Also, we do get hearts uh, to erase our misses, of course, and there is no frenzy, but I think there is in the classic version. I've been saying that about all four games, and I've only been right once, so I'm not going to get my hopes up for that. <laughs> but, again, easiest. I got a oh, 1,000 points. When I booted this cartridge up after buying it for the first time playing Oil Panic, I got a 1,000 points in classic on the first try. So I'm really not all that worried. Of course, I say that, and then you never know what's gonna happen. Uh, Alright. So you get a bigger point bonus for... the more oil you give Yoshi, and in moder- at a time, I mean. Obviously, you know, the more oil you give him, that's how you get points, aside from catching oil. It seems that a lot of Game & Watch games have two primary ways to get points, like getting the treasure and bringing it back up in Octopus, and... Okay, that's the only example I can think of right now. I showed off the spin technique. Look at that. We can be backwards or forwards. And thus, rotating our buckets. Which is pretty useful. But it just adds more complexity, kind of like throwing treasure at a tentacle and octopus that isn't exactly necessary. I mean, I could make the argument Classic didn't have it, and in this case, that works, but a lot of the Classic Game & Watch games suck compared to their modern counterparts. If only for the upgraded visuals and music. Uh, I guess I could let you listen to this song, but it's honestly the worst song of the four. Oh, oops. My bad. See, there we go. Two separate miss counters. Yeah, this song's nice and all, but it does not reach the caliber of fire. But that's not exactly fair to ask because nothing really does. Okay, now here's where I get upset and talk about all my other takes. Just like I do constantly. But, oh, come on, I didn't even get 200... I mean, I didn't even get two misses last time, and I had almost 300 points. Aha! Oh, I didn't realize that destroyed the oil. But that's a cool way to get hearts. A question mark block pops up every so often. That can also apparently pop up if you give Yoshi six drops of oil at once, which I've never tried doing, but it doesn't seem like it would actually be a real thing. But, uh... We'll test that out here in a bit. Maybe not right now. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Ooh, ooh. I guess we could have done it there. We do need to do it when it's nice and slow. Not now though, because there's oil dropping everywhere. I forgot what I was saying. I was talking, oh, oh, the question mark block. Yeah, I mean, that was self-explanatory. You don't really have to explain that, Jason. You're good. You know, but it's neat that you have to aim twice. You have to catch it and you have to throw the oil on the side, you know, while Yoshi's there and the block is there. I don't know. It's just a little bit neat. All right, did that work? Did that give us six points at once or was that just... 
Yeah, I think that just counted as two separate servings of oil for our man Yoshi. I don't think that counted as different things. I don't know why it said you get a question mark block for bonus points if you Yosha up. Oh, ah, uh, ah. What? Okay, I don't know, but apparently, you know, giving all your oil to Yoshi at once isn't a bad idea. Come on. Yeah, I, I can't tell if that's giving us more points. I'm just gonna assume it is and shut the fuck up about it. So, does anybody want to hear about my vacation? Probably not, but I'm gonna end up talking about it anyway. Uh, I'm recording this the same day. Uh, and a few hours after, I did the post-commentary for Classic Octopus. So, you know, the last video. But I'm feeling pretty good. Because I, instead of recording more of this, which is what I would normally do, because I prioritize LP Master 6 work over any other sort of leisure time, uh, I made the executive decision, and I am proud of myself, to sit down and play F-099. Finally, after like at least two weeks of trying to sit down and play it. Because I didn't get a chance on vacation. Oh yeah, Yoshi doesn't have to be all the way there uh, when you drop the oil, which is very, very welcome and nice. Whew. Come on. All right. I like being, I like facing forward. It just makes me nervous uh, seeing myself spun the wrong way because I feel like, you know, I could get disoriented even though I'm probably not going to get disoriented. All right, I've given him six things at once. Oh, oh, there it is. There's the block. Maybe we have to do that a certain amount of times. No, oh, that was close. Okay, we need to be more careful now. Oh, cool. Okay, that was just coins. I'll take it though. Gave us some nice bonus points. We'll get through this pretty quickly. Okay, the song is better when it ramps up. It's much better as a fast, high-intensity song. Speaking of, I need to get a little more high-intensity because I'm being very boring. I say that a lot in my older videos, so that's because I thought the commentary was boring, but I just mean my voice is like, I don't know. There's no excitement in me today, apparently. But F-099 was great. Too bad everybody always picks Mute City, you know. Wait, can we just keep piling it on him? And like, stun locking our buddy Yoshi in the same place? Maybe I should try that. I feel like that's gonna work. But, uh, <clears throat> like, I like the rewards, the unlockables, and everything in F-099 so far. But playing F-099, I kept trying to unlock new tracks, but everybody would just pick Mute City 1 over and over. I played that track like 20 times today. And also it disappointed me a little bit that um, it doesn't feel like the original game. It feels like somebody remade the original game in Unreal Engine with the same sound and graphics, which isn't a bad thing. It's just, I don't know, it, it gives me a weird feeling, if that makes sense. Oh man, we are killing it. You know, we are almost halfway done. I think um, your uh, hearts, if you get a heart, will always prioritize the either the fire misses or it'll start with the fire misses and just do whatever it thinks it can do as in like um oh man i forgot it starts doing this uh how do i explain this like it'll keep them even so if you have two of each it'll uh la, 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 la. my god i'm so sorry everyone no, 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 no! We lose our block too, don't we? We don't! Okay, let's just try our best here. Alright, we gotta get some oil. Oh, oh. Alright, okay, come on. Oh, it turned our block into a heart block. But we had a coin block. I'm kind of PO'd about that. 
Alright, but uh, yeah, I think I'm done playing F-099 for now. I played, you know, a little bit of everything in there. I didn't play the Queen League, and at the time of recording, the uh, King League is not out yet. But it feels really good, you know, because I've been practicing SNES F-0 because of the BS game I just Let's Played. Uh, so yeah, I very much enjoyed that experience. I played it for over two hours straight. Uh, my wife said almost three. I wasn't paying enough attention to find out for sure. But still, good times. It felt good to just sit on the couch and play a game. And then I had to make a bunch of phone calls. Oh, actually, I only ended up having to make one phone call. Shit, shit, shit. Oh, ho, ho. All right. Ooh, okay. Yeah, this is even e way easier than classic. And classic oil panic isn't even hard. So, like... Yeah, I can see... Uh, why everybody seems to think this is the easiest. I mean, I knew it was. So I'm acting like this is news to me, but... Now, this does get a little tricky. I'm glad it ramps up here. Oh, what? Oh, because that had three. I thought I s swapped. Oops. And I thought you got a heart at 500. I guess not. That's cool, though. I think we'll be alright. I say that, and then I'm going to have to redo all of this. But this is another game where it's less formulaic and more risk. Kind of like Octopus, except this has so many variables, especially the modern version, that it feels more... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, wait, no, we did get a heart at 500. What am I talking about? We got a miss erased. All right. Um, yeah, you... No, I'm gonna do this. Yes. Okay, now that I know you can give him, like, infinite buckets at a time, that makes the game so much easier. Shit, shit, shit. Oh. Oh, you have to give him a certain amount to activate the block. Okay. Good to know. Damn it, damn it, damn it! Alright, okay, no more being risky. Because I'm terrified right now. Yep, okay. Okay, commentary is the most important thing when you're doing a Game & Watch game, right? Because nobody's just staring intently at the gameplay for 99% of the game, so you really gotta bring your best stuff, and I'm not. All right, if that's not enough, to, it's not. I need six in each, don't I? Well, three in each. All right, fine. All right, there we go. Oh, wait, it's over there. What are you doing, Jason? Now we've just spawned two blocks. <laughs> that's not helpful at all. No, well, maybe four is enough. Okay, it is, it is. Oh, okay, they do time out. You know, that's okay, that's good to know. The important thing is that we don't die. Alright, two, okay, two is enough for the heart. Oh, I would have been so upset if we missed that. I didn't realize we had three. Alright, okay, okay. Oh, that was a mistake. I put them all in one bucket. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Come on. Not now. Not this close to the end. Okay, pay more attention. Pay more attention. We need post-commentary Jason back. Sorry, post-vacation Jason. That's the official name. Don't wear it out. So I won't be post-vacation Jason for very long. I want to enjoy it while it lasts. Actually, technically, I'll be post-vacation Jason for God knows how long. So who knows the next vacation I'm going on. The last vacation I went on was California in early 2021. You know, I, I don't vacate a lot, you guys. Uh, it's not my thing. I don't have the money. No, what? I don't know why I keep doing that. I'll meet you guys back, I guess. Oh, no. Hey, it's fire! Help the jumpers escape the inferno. 
Now that's a classic. But we already know that because we've already played it. I'll meet you back at 766 points. Well, I'm infuriated and I'm trying not to be cringily angry, but it just takes forever in these games to get back up where, get back up where I was. <laughs> like, oh, and I know this isn't hard. So the pain of this, the difficulty comes from how boring it is and how you have to be patient. This is a game of patience. Like, this can be formulaic and easy if you make it, but the trick is trying not to be risky. You know, you gotta avoid risky moves that make the game go by faster. So, that kind of sucks. Oh, oh! Once you get four, Yoshi will destroy Bowser for a while and give you like, what was that, 20 bonus points? 15? That's not really worth the risk of filling up both the buckets, specifically on the left side, because I figured out that is the difference there. Uh, the left side is the path to Bowser, and the right side is just coins. And I think Yoshi has to be like perfectly exactly on the right side for any of it to work. But I'm not sure shit. Oh well, I almost have 700 points. It's okay. You got to see Luigi upset for the first time, I think. Yeah, this is full attempt number three and we're already back. So this isn't bad. I've had one miss, no, two misses this entire run. And, uh, <laughs> uh, they were both dumb. You saw one of them, and the other one was, I got a miss at 499. Uh, and obviously immediately got to clear it, so that was very nice. Shit. And then that happens, of course. I'm not gonna give in and let post-commentary Jason take over, because I know I can do this. I'm just gonna start spouting off nonsense out of my brain and dropping the oil off with Yoshi every single chance I get. That is my strategy, and it's going to be just fine, because I've noticed there is no bonus for filling up the bucket more. I thought there was, but there isn't. It's not really risk. I mean, there is that bonus you get for, like, the question mark blocks and breathing fire on Bowser and stuff, you know, but... Oh, God. Ugh. For example, here is a bonus that you get because I accidentally filled it up all the way. No, I didn't get the bonus. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and I can't figure it out at all. Is it the order that you give it? Do you have to give the three first? Or I, I have no idea. Can't figure it out at all. So far, so good. We just need 150 more points and now already 140 more points. So... It's flying by. When all three drops come down at once, you get a little break to empty your bucket, so it's not even any harder. In fact, it's kind of easier than when they come down at separate times because you can keep up with everything pretty easily. So while the game is trying to ramp up in difficulty, I think it actually gets easier, at least by a little bit. Ooh. Maybe not as the speed continues to increase. Uh... Oh shit, shit, okay. Nope, that was poorly managed. All right, one of each miss type. Don't get another one, what are you doing? Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, drop it and then again, every three, give it back to Yoshi. All right, since we've slowed down. Okay, Woo. All right, we have less than 100 points to go. I'm gonna be a little upset if I have to spend another like 20 minutes. So we've been going for 58 minutes for three full tries, really? Oh my God. Game & Watch games take forever. Oh well, that's okay. Do we get a block for that? Yes, because he was right on the edge, I'm guessing. All right, I'm gonna play it a little risky so we can get the block. Alright, oh, there's a cat trying to come into my room. That's not a good time at all, buddy. 
Okay. That's right. Ooh, yeah. Alright, let's get rid of these. Sorry, I got really distracted mentally uh, while I was getting the cat out of my room. And that wasn't the best. Oh, shit. Oh, this is not good. I'm gonna fuck this up. I'm gonna fuck this up horribly. I just know it. I can feel it in my bones. No, okay. Okay, empty, empty. I always get so horrifically nervous as we're coming right on the end. If I drop that oil in the wrong place. I can afford a fire. I need to remember that. Okay, I don't know what I'm freaking out about. We can afford to get these last two. Yep, we did it. A thousand. One thousand points! Oh, that feels so good! Three tries! Every other game has taken me how long? An absurd amount of time, to say the least. And yet, here we are. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, well, except for manhole. Manhole didn't take long. Alright, and... Beautiful. And we even get the coin! Oh, oh, you get more coins depending on how many you shoot out. Oh, that was dumb. Oh, and we still get to keep going. See, this is why it's the easiest. And honestly, Classic is even easier. Classic is the one, again, that I got a thousand points on in the first try. I didn't do that on purpose, but... <laughs> I'm kind of glad because I have to pee, even though that was a really dumb move. You did it! You ver- oh, it's the same thing as always. Yes, we know, we can do very hard. <clears throat> Turtle Bridge! One of my least favorite Game & Watch games. Uh... No, you know what? I take that back. It's not that bad. But, oh, ride Turtle Shells to the other bank. We will be playing that on the channel someday. Well, I intend to play every Game & Watch game on the channel in some form someday. But... Well, no spoilers. And we don't get anything for getting five stars in each game. Interesting. How many stars do we have? I'll count that between videos. And see you next time for Classic Oil Panic, the finale. Although I will go ahead and say I am thinking about doing a uh, true ending where I cheat and use a game shark code on an emulator to get all the stars and unlock the final ending. So we'll see how that goes. I love you all. I'm LP Master 6. And it's just so I can show it to you. I'm not trying to say like, oh, I did it. I 100% of the game. Because I didn't. I, I accept that. I've grown as a person in the process. Goodbye. I lied. This is not a goodbye. We have 47 stars, by the way, but I completely forgot to do hard. Oops. <laughs> so I guess we'll be sitting here a while longer. I keep wanting to press A and B to go left and right, but it's the spin move. And I've gotten so used to it because of fire, I don't want to press the control stick. I want to press A and B because it was so efficient in fire. Actually, you know what? I've really got to pee. I didn't get up to pee between modes and video files. So, oh. And I'm back. I just know the cats are going to open the door in a second, though, and that's going to be really obnoxious. All day, they have been screaming for food. Uh, Brian, especially. I don't understand. Is it because it's getting darker earlier? Because we were, you know, gone for a while. The weather has changed. Uh, I don't know if I said this earlier. I told you. I told you the cats were going to open the door, and they... Look, look, this is what they're doing. And it's pissing me off that they keep screaming really loudly for no reason just because they want food extra extra early and I know they want attention I've been giving them as much as possible it's very sweet they missed us and I miss them but my wife's trying to take a nap okay she's tired we had a long we were in the car for like 10 hours yesterday because of all the stops we made I never talked about vacation I was about to go on this tangent about the weather and I guess I am you know, the obligatory fall, like, oh, I love it so much. This is the best weather. I'm just excited it's getting colder. Not because I hate the hot, but just because I love the cold. I mean, I like the cold. I don't mean I like it to be, like, you know, high 60s. I mean, I guess that is what I want. But, like, I'm fine with the 20s. Uh, 
Although I th I'd say my body prefers a temperature of, you know, somewhere in the 60s. Especially because of the poor circulation of my hands. But oh, winter's always been my favorite. Plus I make the most money in winter. But I'm just excited. Okay, you know what? Enough weather conversation. So, oh, I woke up this morning and it was 66 in the house. And that's fine because cats can in they're, they're most comfortable anywhere between 61 and 77 degrees so those are the uh what we keep our thermostat on of course my wife changes that all the time you know to match her temporary comfort needs but ooh, baby 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 you better dang believe that when i'm home alone or she's asleep, I'm leaving it at 61 this winter and I'm so excited. You know, because we also have, you know, space heaters and she has a really nice heated blanket. Because she gets cold easily and we do turn the heat up. But enough about this boring conversation. Uh, we saw the mountains. We did a bunch of touristy stuff with my family. That was nice. Uh... We played Mario Kart and Mario Party with my really young niece and nephew who are... Did I already talk about this? I think I did. Yeah, in the post commentary, that's right. Uh, we went to an arcade where I also played Mario Kart. So basically, of course it was Mario Kart Arcade GP DX, the ultimate arcade experience, which we saw as I was I, I just thought it wasn't there, so I was giving up. We had spent all our money, and uh, there was, we had 823 tickets, and this was an Arcadia Arcade for anybody who's ever been to one of those. Uh, <laughs> we uh, got 823 tickets, and there wasn't much you could spin those on. Like, we could get one Airhead. One Airhead Extreme, not even a good Airhead. And, uh... We saw a bucket, and it said 120 uh, for these cute little hedgehog figures. And my wife was like, oh, we can't afford those. And the the girl at the counter was like, oh, those are only 40 even though it said 120 tickets. So uh, we took advantage of that, and because there was nothing else to get, and it was just me and my eldest niece at this uh, arcade with us because... You know, we were exhausted. We were hanging out by ourselves. And I told my family, hey, please wait to go to an arcade with us. So I really want to see the kids at the arcade and I want to play skee ball with my mom. And they all said, okay, sure. And then they got back and we got up from our nap and I was like, what all did you guys do? And they said, oh, we went to the arcade. I was so mad because like that, that was one of the two things I wanted to do with the kids. We also played mini golf. That was fun. Uh, but, oh jeez. <laughs> but we still had a fun time at that arcade. And I saw Mario Kart as we were walking out. We uh, won a bunch of tickets in Crossy Road Arcade. Because I'm very good at, you know, the mobile game Crossy Road. Because I played it a ton in high school when it was at its peak. And I, my high score was like, I can't remember if it was 800, because that doesn't sound very good, or 1800. It, I'm pretty sure it was, it was really high. I was very good at it. Uh, I had unlocked most of the special characters. I don't know, either way, uh, my niece and I had a great time playing that. And uh, then we played Mario Kart. I played Ski Ball with my wife and niece, and it was a good time. Who needs family? <laughs> Even though it was a family vacation, I was only hanging out with the people I usually hang out with. But I guess that's okay. So I get the sense my, like, my eldest sister's husband uh, doesn't like me too much. He's very conservative. I guess he doesn't like my hippie-isms. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he doesn't like my other sister, the one he's not married to and didn't go on the vacation. I don't know. I don't want to get into that, because it's been bumming me out a bit. I don't want to get into the bummer stuff, but... 
just... I was so ready to be home. And I hate to say this, because my wife loves traveling, you know? I Traveling, in my opinion, is just like never worth it? Okay, I don't want to say it's never worth it, but it's never... Like, it's mostly experiences I could have at home. Ooh, that was good. That wasn't even a full three buckets. Or full full two buckets. Full six drops. Uh, they're all experiences, you know, my favorite parts are ones I can have at home or just driving somewhere. Not even that far away. I'm not saying I had a bad time or anything. I had a great time. It's just, I feel like the maximum you should stay out of your house is one night away from home. For me personally, I mean. Sorry, cat interruption again. Uh, but my wife wants to do a lot of traveling, and you know, I that's fine. I want to take her traveling to do what she wants to do with her life, you know? She also wants to move, but we've decided to cross that bridge when we come to it. I think I've mentioned this in this Let's Play before, but either way. Um, does that activate the block? Yes. Beautiful. Right, I think it just does the same animation every time, no matter how many... Uh, oil drops we give it. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, well. But, um... I don't know. I just... Like, I spent $500. Well, a little over $500. Which... Isn't bad for a vacation for, you know, a good five days, but... I don't know. Again, it sounds like I'm being a Debbie Downer and I didn't have a good time, but I did have a good time. It's just... I wish I had done more of the stuff I could do at any time with my, you know, family. Specifically, you know, my younger niece and nephew. I taught them a lot about how to play Mario Kart. And I think that was the highlight of my trip. Them mastering drifting in Mario Kart. Well, not mastering. You know, especially the, the nephew. He's quite young. Uh, his motor skills haven't developed perfectly yet. Of course, neither have mine. But I'm pretty good at Mario Kart. You know, especially for a casual uh, viewpoint. But we did see uh, some beautiful mountain sights when it was just me and my wife. Uh, on the way home, we drove up this mountain pass road for 30 minutes out of the way of the way home because we didn't get to do it on the vacation. And... It was mostly beautiful trees that we saw, but we get to this overlook, and I park, and we get out, and it's sprinkling, and it's it's nice and cold. Uh, and we see these crows. Four crows come up. And crows are my uh, third favorite bird, after pigeons and then chickens. Well, because pigeons are the best. I mean, damn it. Wait, did I get a heart? Oh! Oh! That was a question mark block, and I wasn't paying attention, so I missed it. Oh well, it doesn't matter, we're just playing until we get a game over. See, I already surpassed 200 points plentifully, so let's just see how far we can get, I guess. Uh, I am a little upset I missed that heart, but whatever. Damn it! <laughs> Uh, it feels good to not have to play carefully, constantly in this Let's Play, though. But anyway, back to the crow story. Now, obviously, you can't feed uh, animals. It's not good to feed animals unless you're going to consistently do it. That's why they tell people in, you know, national parks not to do it. And uh, we were like, oh, let's give the crow sh something shiny because crows love shiny things. And if you give crows shiny things, they'll give you gifts and they'll remember you forever and be your friend. And this sounds fake, but it is 100% real. Crows love shiny things and befriend people and bring the people who give them shiny things, shiny things, and it's really cool. I didn't expect a gift back, you know, because we were leaving. This is uh, almost seven hours away from our house. No, it changes based on traffic, six to eight hours. Uh, again, the way home was over eight hours, so... Ugh. Sitting in traffic was 
probably the worst part of the trip, and it's done. Almost 600 points, come on, don't even give me that. Oh well, we have 49 stars now. Oh well. I will see you guys in Classic after I finish my story. Uh, so I pull a quarter out of my pocket and I set it on the ground. And these crows, they all look at me and they jump over. I back up. They jump over to the quarter, but they can't pick it up. One of them keeps trying to pick it up. I got a video of it. It's great. And uh, then I pick it up and I'm going to prop it up against a rock so they can grab it at a good angle so it's not flat. And as I'm about to do that, this guy's trying to walk by. And I said, oh, you can go by. We're just hanging out with the crows. He said, you're not feeding them, are you? I then realized he's a park ranger. I said, oh, no. He said, okay. I said, we're just giving them something shiny because they like shiny things. And he said, uh, try not to. You know, they're wild. We're trying to keep them wild. And I said, oh, okay. Have a good one. And he just kind of shakes his head and walks off. There's no need to be that rude. Like, that made me mad the entire 20 minutes down the mountain. Just that the fact that guy was rude for no reason. We weren't feeding the crows. We're not going to tame the crows. They're not becoming domesticated because I gave them a quarter. They were just going to take it back to their nest. They weren't relying on it for food. What a dumbass. That guy's a park ranger? Are you fucking kidding me? All right, enough of that. But <laughs> uh, I've mostly said negative things, but I did thoroughly enjoy the trip, and I will talk about it more next time, I guess. Woo!